Good morning. <clears throat> oh my. I accidentally opened my sunroof. Oops. Um, it's 40 degrees out. We don't want that. Okay, I'm a little not put together quite yet. Um, let me turn this down a little. So today is Friday, which feels like Monday this week. Thankfully, it was a short week. Um, I guess there's like this is more of a personal update, and then I'll kind of update you on HCG. But um, on New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day, or something like that, or the day before, or I don't even know when. Um, our bulldog. We were sitting there watching TV and we started hearing a bunch of banging and we looked over and realized that our um, bulldog, who is about three years old, was in full body seizure. And he's never had seizures before, nor have I ever had a pet that's had seizures before or even witnessed a person that's had seizures before. So um, it was very traumatizing and frightening and it freaked me out and I realized that I'm useless in emergency situation because I stood there frozen and said to my husband, Frank, do something, do something, do something. Something's wrong. Um, maybe if he wasn't there, I would have responded, but I just freaked out. I just stood there frozen. And um, it was awful. It was absolutely, absolutely awful. So um, my husband, you know, held him and consoled him, and he finally came to, and it was probably under a minute long. Um, but then, you know, that whole thing after, if anybody's seen this before, they um, are very disoriented. He couldn't walk right. His front paws kept giving out. He was drooling. He was panicking and pacing. And it was very scary. Really, really scary situation. And then he ended up having a cluster of seizures, meaning that he had two more after that, about 10 to 15 minutes after the first one, he ha he had a... Um, instead of a full body, it was just the head seizure. And then about 10 or 15 minutes later, he had another head seizure. So um, in all three instances, he stopped breathing. And so that was really, really scary. And bulldogs, um, it's an English bulldog. And English bulldogs have severe respiratory issues because of their genetic design and makeup. So um, when something like this happens, you know, they're even at higher risk. So, <clears throat> it was just really difficult. We took him to the emergency vet. They ran some blood works. So they couldn't blood work. They couldn't find a reason or cause for it. So, um, so the next steps would be to go probably get like a CAT scan or something to see if it's maybe a tumor. Otherwise, they're just going to rule it as epilepsy. Seizures in English bulldogs are common. Um, I don't know that I'm going to go get that scan to see if he has a tumor unless he has another seizure. Um, I, I don't think I want to know, actually. So, And I don't know if there's anything I can do if he does have one. So, um, you know, I think it's a wait and see at this point. Um, if he has another one, we'll take him in. If he doesn't, great. Hoping he doesn't. Um, after that, my husband started to feel sick. I started to feel sick. My sister had this awful flu bug for five days. I have an overactive immune system, so I don't typically get sick when other people do. And I, because my body felt like it was fighting something off, I thought, wow, this must be really bad because for it to, to penetrate my immune system, you know, is, uh, a sign that it's a severe, severe illness. So... Um, or a severe strand of the flu, you know. But come to find out, what actually was happening with me was that I, I found out that I have a UTI. I've never had one in my life, so I didn't know what it felt like. But I had severe back pain, so I thought that the that a cold or the flu was settling in my back. That's what I thought was going on. But I've never had that before either, so I wasn't sure. All I know is I had a severe back pain that I did not think was from injury. It did, I, I hadn't injured myself, I hadn't done anything, so I knew it was from something else. So I called my naturopath because I got to the point where I couldn't sleep, sit, stand, lay, or anything without being in excruciating pain. 
and she got me in that day and we ran my strange tests and it did show that um, I have an infection and then also I did need some adjustments in my back so um, the funny thing is is when I went to her a few weeks ago and she ran all the tests which detected my ear infection she kept asking me if I had any signs of a UTI and I said no and she goes well the test showing that you have some you know maybe the beginning of some sort of infection and I said no no cloudy urine well she had told me what the symptoms were I didn't know but but no burning when peeing no cloudy urine no back pain nothing well wouldn't you know that that darn test had picked up this UTI weeks ago before I even knew I had it so she had told me at that time, I'm going to, you know, I have something to treat it. I'll put it aside for you. And then if you get any symptoms, call. Well, I got in symptoms, but they were so severe. She wanted, uh, we decided that it was best for me to go in and rerun the test just to make sure it wasn't a kidney infection versus a UTI or what have you. So I um, am feeling a lot better. It's a couple days later. I've been on some, um, I don't do antibiotics. And so I am on colloidal silver to help with the bacterial infection for the UTI and I'm on some anti-inflammatory stuff that's not um, NSAIDs or anything like that like ibuprofen um, and then I am also seeing a chiropractor I went to him twice already in the last two days and I'm gonna go see him again tonight um, I have my my hip and my spine and, and things are off on the left side of my body. And um, that didn't surprise me either because a year ago, I saw, more than a year ago, I suffered a knee injury on my right knee that caused me to limp. And when I was limping, I threw my left side of my body off. And I had gone to see a chiropractor um, to get that adjusted, but he had started snapping my neck and doing things that I felt a little uncomfortable with, so I stopped seeing him. Well, apparently, I stopped seeing him before the issue was resolved, even though I had felt better, because my doctor now, my Cairo is now picking up on all of this. So, so I'm going to continue seeing him so that he can get that stuff fixed. Um, ironically enough, he did mention during my visits that a lot of... Um, any misalignments in the body can actually cause or contribute to infertility. And um, so I want to go ahead and get those things fixed so that I can rule that out as a possible option. And I had read and heard this before. Wouldn't it be crazy if all this time I couldn't have a baby because of misalignments in my body? Because he did say that that is, con you know, those joints and that alignment is control it controls your hormones, basically. And it can cause misfires there and cause issues with infertility. And I have read women who went to the chiropractor, got adjusted, they had dealt with infertility, and then all of a sudden they got pregnant. And I would just die if that was the case, you know. I mean, I think I have other issues going on with my immune system, but who knows? So anyway, you know, insurance covers the visits. I just pay my copay, so I might as well go ahead and just, you know, get whatever issues I have resolved. I think it's in my best interest. So. With all of that said, sorry, I'm trying to keep this vlog under 10 minutes. Now let me get to um, HCG. I'm starting to load today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, I'll dose. Somebody please tell me um, if, I'm, if I'm right, 250 IU while loading and then dropping down to, I'm going to do 125 because that seems to be what everybody does. And then adjust accordingly if I feel any hunger or anything going on that I don't feel like I should be. So, um, so that's the plan. I'll be on it as you know as long as I'm releasing or until I meet my goal or what have you. I'm not really sure where that will be or how long that will take, but that's the plan. Um, I was gonna target load. I think I still am. I might do a little bit of mixture, but I'll definitely get a lot of good healthy fats in there, basically is the plan. Whether it's a specific target loading or not, my goal is a lot of fat, as much healthy fat as possible. Um, what else? I think that's it. Oh, when I mix my, I haven't done prescription before, so when I mix my my um, stuff, how much? how long do I mix for? Like a few weeks at a time? Or, and then do I keep it in the fridge? I guess if you guys can let me know, because I haven't mixed or anything yet, and I, and I need to 
watching vlogs on that. I'm a little nervous. I mean, I've mixed before to do my infertility. I guess it would be the same. I mix a bottle and then I just draw out my dosage for the day. So if anybody has any tips or anything to tell me about as a first time RX user, just let me know, please. Um, and that's it. I love you guys. I'm trying to keep this short. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I haven't been on. Um, you know, I've been I have a lot going on and on top of that we're getting ready to put our house on the market and, and we've been looking for a new house and we're thinking about building so I guess it's good to have a full plate but um, I'm also trying to limit my time to social networking like I want to contribute to this community and be of support um, but I also need to make sure that I have balance in my life and I've put a lot of time um, I've been a little unbalanced so I'm just trying to rebalance everything again so um, but I, I'll be here, you know, and I'll vlog, maybe not as much, and I'm not watching as many as I used to, but I'm going to try to catch up on that as well. Um, I just want you guys to know that I love you all, and I hope you're all doing well on your VLCDs. You've all gotten off to a great start. I'm a little behind you, but I'll be joining you very soon. I'll be joining you. Monday will be my first VLCD. So love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.